Hey, Saints and Names, how are you? What it do? Hope you're well. Hope you're good. Swell. Swell. You know, last season, uh, we <laughs> opened up talking about washcloths, and that kind of started a little thing. Yes, people start DMing us. Uh, how many washcloths do we use per week? No. Nah. <laughs> do we? Do we use washcloths for our feet? No, I got a number of DMs <laughs> asking for washcloth advice. Or people lamenting over staying over somebody's house who didn't have no washcloths. Or I had this one young lady who was like, yeah, but you don't use washcloths to wash your hands. Listen. <laughs> what? Listen. <laughs> do not take offense to me advocating for friction. All right? Like, if you don't no. want to use a washcloth, that is all right. Like, you can still no. make it into glory. That's not a moral indictment on you unless you're musty. But if you're not... Then just do do whatever do whatever works. No, I know? think that I think the most I think the, one of the funniest stories. I know funniest isn't a word, but I want to say it. Funniest is it's the funniest the word. The funniest story, if it's past tense. Oh, the funniest story was when someone uh, DM'd us. It was like, yeah, I got the shower. No, I got in the shower, and when I got in the shower, I I realized that my husband used a washcloth, and when he used the washcloth, I said. You listen to the podcast with the Perry's. No, didn't they you? told me that that they they just we like we've been reuniting people with washcloths, and, and they I, just had like a little chuckle together in the bathroom, like yeah, like we both use washcloths. And somebody asked me, they were like, "So can we use loofahs? You can use whatever." My thing is, the hand is not sufficient enough to get off summer dirt. That's that's all I'm saying. And the, all I'm the, saying is, the hand is just too smooth. Don't neglect the butt. <laughs> don't neglect it. Wash it. <laughs> Set it up. Because <laughs> it it's getting neglected. Because. If you just with your hand in there. All buds matter. <laughs> well, and to think that we're talking about prayer. <laughs> talking about prayer. Talking about talking to God. And, uh. <laughs> Our Father who art in heaven. Oh, man. Hallowed be his name. <laughs> that kingdom come. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. <laughs> and some about forgive our debtors <laughs> as sin against us. <laughs> so what are we talking about today? Prayer. Just say Prayer. It. Just okay. say after the Lord's Prayer. What are you talking about? Oh, words? man. Let's get past this. Okay. You like praying? I do. Why? Oh, man. I, I love prayer because um, it really does put me at peace and ease when I when I have after I have talked to the Lord mm. about about my fears, about my worries, about um, about my plans, mm -hmm. uh, and you know sometimes I get busy and I don't mm -hmm. you know pray as much as I should, and I don't feel right, and so I I, th I thank God for that, but I pr prayer is. It's always been good for me. Um, I, I realize that I'm, I'm not as anxious, I'm not as burdensome mm -hmm. after I've, I, I, you know, after I've prayed. And so, uh, what about you? I have learned, and, and I'm continually learning to enjoy it more. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, I, I think what kind of changed the way I felt about prayer is. The more I learned about God and the safer he became, the more I wanted to pray, hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. And so, like, when I first became a believer, prayer was kind of, you know, it's something you're supposed to do. You're supposed to seek God and pray and all the things. But it had so many, um, so many like, goals attached to it that were, like, worldly. And so, you know, you pray to, to only get something from God mm -hmm. or, you know, I was in like a, a super charismatic church and I love I'm still halfway charismatic. So this isn't shade, but it is to say that we pray to be powerful yeah. all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to seek God. You got to consecrate yourself and you got to fast. And, and it was only so you, so you could have some kind of like spiritual stature. It wasn't to just simply meet and be with God. And then I went to a super legalistic church where it was, if I don't pray and talk to God, then he's mad at me and he's angry. And so I think as I've like been able to kind of like 
knock off and wipe off all of those extra things yeah. and it just actually became about a conversation with me and the lord it's just become an easier and more i guess enjoyable experience yeah because i, I remember one time i came to you when, when my spiritual life was kind of lacking and uh the lord we were married yeah okay yeah this was this was uh a couple of years ago, uh, probably not. Yeah, a couple of years ago. I don't know if you remember when I came to you and I was I was kind of broken, a little teary eyed, and I was I was saying how <clears throat> I, I feel like the Lord was telling me that He missed me. Mm. You know that like He missed me in such an intimate and close way, and I remember feeling like like this this conviction, but also this comfort that God just wanted to talk to me. Mm. And it wasn't it wasn't about anything that I wanted from him or necessarily not anything he wanted from us. Because I think a lot of time, you know, our, 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 us praying and us trying to spend time with the Lord is trying to seek, oh, God, God what do you have for me to do? And mm. it's like, no, a lot of times God just wants you to, to talk to him mm -hmm. as, a, as a son or a daughter. And so I think for me, you know, prayer is comforting in that way, in the same way we feel after we spend time with our, our earthly father, like. That, that comfort, that 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 closeness. Uh, and I, for me, that's what prayer is. It's like, man, like I want to talk to my father. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to spend time with him. So let's get into the mechanics. So you have uh, different people that pray in different ways for different lengths in different places, right? Yeah. And so a lot of the saints I grew up with, they had a prayer closet. Mm -hmm. And they would enter it at like 5 a.m. in the morning. Get it out. I did. And I should have prayed about it. And <laughs> <laughs> when I tried to chase after that, yeah. I thought I was a spiritual failure. Because yeah. it's like, I got to have a prayer closet. I got to be like Priscilla Shire in the movie and get all these post-it notes on the wall. And, you know, pray without ceasing. And it's, and it's just like, no, I want to go to sleep. Yeah. It's 5 a.m. Yeah. And so I guess for you, what what have you found that works best with the season that you're in when it comes to praying? The time, the place all the things man that's such a good question because when i first gave my life to the lord i was living with my aunt mm -hmm. who was a minister who had no kids and so she took me in and she had so much room for me in this big old house that she lived in because she lived by herself mm -hmm. and i remember you know she was the first christian that i had close proximity with and so i remember like uh, a couple of months even before i came a christian waking up every morning trying to figure out for the life of me why there was oil on my head every <laughs> <laughs> time I woke up and yeah. so I would wake up and so I didn't grow up in a Christian home so uh -huh. I was so confused I'm like why did somebody touch chicken and touch my is my hair producing oil in uh -huh. my sleep uh -huh. and one morning she uh, I, I, I hear her I hear somebody praying over me and I look up and she's anointing my head with oil and it had to be like 5 10 in the morning mm -hmm. And as I started to wake up early and earlier, I heard her praying. You should have every, been every, morning, every morning, every morning. I love those prayers. Yeah. And so. I don't know what they're saying, but. As, when, when I became a Christian, I, I kind of felt like that's what my life had to look like. Mm. And if it didn't look like that, I was a failure. Mm. But God had to show me, no, like, your life has different seasons. Mm. And so I think what communicating with somebody looks like is communicating with them the best you can in the most, in the, in the, in the most organic way you can in that season mm -hmm. and so i don't think that god is necessarily calling us to be this rigid robot if i don't pray at nine o'clock because if, if you look at it that's what that's how muslims mm -hmm. you know yeah. praying five times a day facing towards the east it's, it's this rigid systematic almost not almost it is work-based mm -hmm. you know type of relationship with god mm -hmm. but it's like no like god knows that the that the man that I was when I was single out there evangelizing is not going to be the man that I am with four kids mm -hmm. traveling, mm -hmm. right? And so what I what I had to realize is that my prayer time with the Lord has to look like uh, it, when it has to has it has to be some sacrifice. I'm not saying that we should not sacrifice waking up when we're tired when mm -hmm. we stayed up with a baby the whole night right. previous night. But what I am saying is like man, like as you go always make an intentional effort to spend time with god mm -hmm. whether that's on a plane i remember being on plane rides and having my most prayer like my most intimate prayer times mm -hmm. on uh you know late night plane rides mm -hmm. or you know in my hotel when i travel like 
like finding that time yeah. because if you love someone you will find time yeah you know and so i think that's what it looks like yeah because I, I uh it's it's i think a common excuse for us not to pray is 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 busyness um but it, it's not ever busyness it's it's idolatry yeah it, it's it's that other, other things have taken a hold of our affections a, a really interesting enemy of prayer I believe is that we don't like being bored. And what I mean is, is that we don't know how to sit still Mm. and to be still. So even when we pray, our, our minds are going to all types of things and they're probably good things. Oh, I need to do this. I need to do that. Mm -hmm. Or I wonder what's on this and that. And if if you think about even how we engage with our phones, how we engage with TV, like we don't have to sit through a commercial. Mm -hmm. We don't have to sit through anything. We know how to keep ourselves entertained the entire day. Prayer is one of the only spaces where you are forced to be still. Yeah. And I mm. think that's what makes it harder for us to sit with God and contemplate of prayer in particular for mm. long periods of time because we are constantly discipling ourselves to be constantly entertained. Yeah. And uh yeah. and productive. It, oh, for sure. Yeah, it, we it, just, it's so it's so it's so hard to just focus. That's so true. <laughs> you that's know what so I'm saying? That's so true. Yeah, because like that's so good that you said that because the world around us is making it low-key making our lives more convenient where we don't have to watch commercials where we don't have to wait for this where we don't have to like even swipe our cars we just gotta tap you got to <laughs> it's true and so like we don't efficient. we don't know how to sit with anything uh-uh. anymore you know and it so it feels like, like a, it can it can feel like a waste of time yeah like why am i why yeah. am i because even if even reading the bible feels more efficient because we're doing something right yeah. my bible's open oh I, I that's a definition oh i've circled this word i've underlined this i've learned a thing that i can pass on prayer it feels like sometimes if if you don't tap into the mystical spiritual nature of the fact that you are entering into the holies of holies wherever you are to talk to the divine if if that's outside of like your realm of thinking then it feels like i'm just talking to myself hmm. it takes a measure of faith to say i'm actually talking talking to a being on a throne who can hear me yeah, and who good. will respond accordingly. That's really that's, good. That's hard. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> that's really good. Another thing, too, is um, I know we talked about anxiety this season, but also, like, like the, 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 the temptation to work when, we, when, we're, when we're afraid instead of just praying. Like, for me, like, when, I, when I'm concerned about, you know, money or concerned about anything in my life this temptation to like to like do 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 instead of just sitting at the feet of god and talking to god and waiting for instruction Mm -hmm. i don't do that Mm -hmm. a lot of the times and so god like consistently has to remind me that no like the answers that you need is at my feet Mm -hmm. not at you're doing you know what i'm saying and uh, i'm just consistently reminded about jesus you know in the garden of gethsemane when he kept going to pray in the in in the last hours of him being captured it's like no nah, like even in his most anxious moments when he was asking you know god the father if if this may his be his will like to to take this cup from him like he was he was praying mm-hmm. and seeking god mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and so like i don't know i, I just think that um yeah we just have to consistently remind ourselves that prayer prayer is good i think uh like being productive is is good like that's kind of the call as an image bearer to to subdue to cultivate things that's that's a part of what we're called to do irregardless of sin yeah but i think the temptation to be productive over being prayerful underneath that is impatience yeah it's you know if i am productive first and foremost i can get things done now waiting on god i don't know when he gonna do what i'm asking or if he's going to do what i'm asking so asking so let me do it now Which but there, is, I, I felt like in my life yeah. though there's been times where i've had to discern there are moments where like even in exodus i don't know where it is but there's this time where something pops off moses 
goes and asks God about it. God is like, why are you talking to me? Move on. Like, go go do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Where it's like he has the maturity and the wisdom and has walked with God long enough where he doesn't have to ask God what to do. He knows what to do, so do it. Yeah. But then there are other times where you do need to ask God what to do and wait on him to give you the answer. Yeah. But it's in the waiting that is tough. Um, and so I feel like so much of prayer has to be intertwined with a just actual relationship with God. Because how you pray, when you pray, where you pray, how often you pray, what you pray, all of that is contingent on what you know about God and the scriptures and the history that you have with God in your relationship with him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just said like four ideas. No, and that was like four <laughs> ideas, but, it, but, it, but it's <laughs> they good. They all make sense. It's good that you end a relationship because I think that what prayer does, it cultivates a deeper relationship. And so when we feel tempted to not go to the Lord the next time, like I, what, what, basically what I'm trying to say is when we pray, like God has the opportunity to 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 show Himself work trustworthy. He uh He has the opportunity to show Himself to be God, and so the next time we won't feel as tempted to rest on our ability, but we feel you know confident to go to Him and pray the next time. Mm-hmm. And so I think that 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 spending time with the Lord and allowing Him to show Himself to us gives us the confidence to say, you know what. Let me not do this on my own, you know, power and strength. Let me let me take it to the Lord in prayer and see what he what he has to say. I think it just builds up our faith because I think at the root of us trying to be productive on our own is a lack of trust. Yeah, it's a but, lack of trust in God. But what I would add to that is is that I know people who pray a lot and live bad and it's because they are praying to a god that they don't even read about and so they maybe are praying maybe not helpful prayers or the things that they are asking they don't have the spiritual maturity to discern the answer does that make sense what i'm saying yeah so it's like flesh it out though if i'm a person that prays but doesn't read the Bible, Yeah. then even how God answers the prayer, I don't have a framework to figure out the answer myself. Yeah. Right? And so it's like, Lord, uh, help me to know what I should do today. And they just like, oh, I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's like you pray, but you didn't have any context for the answer when it's in the scriptures, That's which is the love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, that the body belongs to the Lord, like to be sober mind. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I think we cannot separate praying from reading the bible yeah they are very much intertwined yeah and so that's why it's helpful to actually be reading it and then praying or praying and then reading so that like yeah that's really good we're walking right that's really good because i think (laughs) i think also what what reading the bible does it gives because the bible is the revealed word of god it gives us a framework for how for who god is and so I think a lot of times in our prayer, we don't even really know as much about the character of God to even know how to communicate to him mm. in the first place. Interesting. And so I think understanding the mind of God will inform how we talk to Absolutely, him. Absolutely, totally, totally, yeah. yes. And so I think that I think that understanding like having a framework for who he is, I think we approach him yeah, different yeah. when we talk about people and when we talk about ourselves, when we talk about our children. And so I think that if you have this this legalistic, this 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 God who sits down and and, and um, you know judges the un, the ungodly, but not this fatherly figure who who condescended and came a man and lived amongst people, I think that the way you view God will inform how you pray. Yeah, no, it's totally like. Being informed is a thing. Yeah. That's why the disciples, hey, Jesus, teach yeah. us yeah. how to pray. Yeah. How did he start? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. How does he teach them? We begin with who God is in relationship to us. Yes. Where is he seated? In heaven. What does that mean? He's transcended. Whew. What does that mean? I don't approach him like he's a regular person. That's good. That all that off top changes how you pray. Yeah. Because <laughs> it means like, oh, he's to be valued and respected, but he's also in heaven yet our father. Yes. Therefore, he's transcended yet personal. Yeah. And so 
everything about i think the scriptures can be really helpful in us being able to pray um a certain kind of way but yeah, also but, but, go but ahead. let me just say this because you know I, i'm not even gonna put this on other people because i know people like this but i used to be like this when i first well, became, what was you like Tell when us. i first became a christian mm -hmm. i was very i was very legalistic in what way? And how I how I viewed people's sin. Like, I didn't humanize people. I saw people's sin before I saw them. Okay. And so because I saw people's sin because before I saw them, uh, when I prayed for people, it was always, um, I was always praying to the Lord to, to, like, correct people. Interesting. I was always praying for the Lord to, like, to, like fix this, fix that, fix mm, that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, like. You don't really understand me as like a, a like an intimate and personal God for in the lives of others. So explain. The, and so what I was so when I first came to the Lord, I, I I believe well I know that it was a real supernatural conversion, right? But that that same experience that I had with the Lord, I didn't really like I didn't really make that connection with with other people to God. Mm -hmm. And so every time I saw people, it was always, I saw their sin, 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 sin. And I know this, this is a podcast on prayer, not legalism, but mm -hmm. what, I'm, what I'm saying is- Your character affected how you pray. It, it, my character mm -hmm. and, and, and how I view people affected how I pray for them. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't understand that the same God who had this close, intimate relationship with me has the same intimate relationship and wants to have the same intimate relationship with, with, with people. And so it wasn't until I, I stopped praying and started asking the Lord to humble me when he began to allow me to see people. And so it affected how I, it affected how I talked to people on the streets. Mm. It, I didn't, I didn't want to just focus on a person seeing, but I wanted to f find out wh 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 why, why are you sinning? So how do, how do you, what is the difference between your prayers now? Because you still, in reality, people still do need to be, Yeah, you know. I think, I think the difference between my prayers then and my prayers now is that a person's, I, 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 look, at a per, I look at people in a more holistic way because I don't, I don't just think about their sin, but I also think about them, their person. Like I, I pray about because I think sometimes we if we only see people sin, that's the only thing we will pray for. But we won't we won't pray for the things that that cause them to to make to have the sin in the first place. And so like if a person is is mean, right? Uh -huh. It's like oh, are oh, you, you talking about me? Yeah. Got if it. a person is mean, if we only see their sin, which is them being mean, and not think about how they were hurt, right? Uh -huh. That that has caused them to. Sh to clam up and to lash out. Interesting. We won't pray for that. Uh -huh. We only we only see their sin. It's like no, nah, like in prayer, I think God gives us discernment when we're humble before Him and not legalistic to know, like no, there's a reason why this person is this way. I want you to care for this person, and so like it just changed the way I did ministry and changed the way how, how I interacted with people, uh, and not this legalistic like you're this, you're that. It changed the way I, I dealt with you. You know what I'm saying? Praise God. From whom all blessings because I was calling out your sin, calling yeah, out this, calling out you that, sure were. and I was literally going to the all Lord. Like the time. this girl is mean. My it's like goodness. nah, this girl is protecting herself you because was, she's you vulnerable. You was, was gossiping with God, and so God was like, nah, like yeah, like in prayer, like I can reveal some things about you to mm -hmm. people that will help you be a better minister. And yeah, I think what you said is actually really helpful and important because I've seen it in my own life where praying, praying for people is a way to cultivate love for people yes um especially our enemies uh because jesus tells us to pray for our enemies and most of our enemies aren't we ain't out here like david with saul trying to kill us some of us might be i don't know but <laughs> most of us have just regular regular people who are antagonistic towards us yeah or not for us or do not love us who, or who have hurt us or wound us mm -hmm. uh maybe physically emotionally uh financially like they ain't paid you back like whatever the case may be and jesus tells us to pray for them and i found that when i sincerely pray for a person and what i mean is not just imprecatory prayers where it's like god uh, be vengeful and and enact justice and let your you know judgment fall upon their head. I feel like Nigerians <laughs> be praying like that. And I think there, I do think there's place to pray that God's justice will roll down 
like I, I like that's a that's a righteous thing for God yeah. to get his justice. Yet at the same time, I feel like when you pray good for people that have done you wrong, it forces your heart to yeah. move in a different way. That's good. Like and I hate it, but I feel like I got to do it. Yeah. Cuz it's just like if I don't pray good for you, what's going to happen is I'm going to start acting bad towards you. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Cuz I think if we if we if we get out of prayer only like being this judgmental you know legalistic type of christian i think that we have to like truly ask ourselves like no nah, like did god really reveal to you all that he wanted to reveal to you in that prayer because we're we're, we're complicated in in holistic people and so like i don't know i it, it was just a lesson that i had to i had to learn um and i'm, I'm glad i did and i still can be better at it to be honest with you yeah. but uh you never answered the question of the mechanics of how or where or when you pray like as a as a father or a husband as a, a busy man yeah so I, I i i try to make it my business to pray as soon as i get up you know and so as soon as i get up because i think there is a sweet and silent you know uh and quiet time to just pray before the busyness of the day happens and so a lot of time i'm a night person and so a lot of times i pray before i you know i go to bed or i pray with you but as soon as i wake up you know i i i, I try to pray but a lot of times my prayer you know is alone when i'm you know before i write or before i study you know um i try to pray but i think it's it's i don't know it's it's just something about this something sweet about the morning that that before the distractions of the day before my kids wake up before i say anything just to say a, a quick prayer and sometimes those prayers are long sometimes they're shorter but i always try to pray before i wake up yeah i rarely share where i pray because it just sounds weird in the but shower in the shower because <laughs> it's so completely undistracted yeah and so i will i will be in there a solid 20 30 minutes no phone, no nothing, yeah. and just talk to the Lord. Um, another th practical thing uh, about prayer is that God has given us gifts. He's equipped the body, or he's given us all gifts to equip the body for the work of ministry, right? Mm -hmm. And I think one of the snares of our giftings is that because it comes natural we don't think we don't we we forget to still pray mm -hmm. that god would help us or use us or all the things and i think as a writer in particular that's why i feel that pressure the most um like when i was writing my book or when we was writing poetry you can kind of lean on your natural ability yeah. when god wants you to lean on his supernatural help and I have found That's that real. when you depend on the Lord and you ask God to meet you in your gifts and to use you with your gifts and to move through your gifts, like it's it transcends gifting. Yeah, it like does. it becomes a very spiritual and anointed and powerful uh, you situation. Preaching, boy. So before you write, praying. While you write, praying. Before you serve, praying. While you serve, it, praying. Uh, before you preach, praying. You. While you preach. Praying. I don't you know really. what else is there. I, I just said hospitality, it, nah, teaching, and no, nah, that's so real. Because when we was writing poetry, I was so good at writing poems. I had to remind myself, no, nah, seek the Lord, you know, for what He wants you to say. But when I transitioned to writing this here book, <laughs> and I, you know, and I, I'm sending stuff back to these people, like, no, nah, this is too short. Mm -hmm. Like this is, and he's like, no, nah, I don't have nothing else to say. Mm -hmm. I've learned how to communicate a lot in a little writing poems and like. I just need your help, God. And so it's just a different beast. And so like, like no, nah, just because God has gifted you in something doesn't mean that you shouldn't stop seeking him in prayer. And so now I just find myself just sitting there with the, my, my, my computer open saying, Lord, help me. Mm -hmm. Help me. And you know why it's, it's, it's good and healthy? It's because if the Lord has gifted you in a particular way, mm -hmm. I know what then you're going to say that leaves a lot of room for boasting yes and so if god puts you in a position where your giftedness is not good enough Woo. then when you pray and it still succeeds and it's still useful and in all the things oh, it eliminates any so opportunity convicting. for boasting <laughs> this is so convicting because i'll be sitting at this jack and you you know this because i, I talk you, to you but i'll be sitting there like struggling. lord i thought i was a writer <laughs> 
<laughs> you know? That's why people be talking about writer's block. And writer's block is a thing, but sometimes it's the Lord humbling you. Yeah. Yeah. And being like, like nah, like yeah. I gave you that mind. Like I know you're creative. I know you, you know, you can write. I know you're a gifted writer. But I just I just I just want you to lean on me and I want I want to get closer to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like the Lord is literally drawing me closer Yee. to him in this writer book because it's like it's not just about uh-huh. a book and you releasing the book to the masses it's about my relationship with you yeah, Preston. Yeah, be, I want to bring be. you closer to yeah, me yeah. I want I want you to trust me more mm-hmm. I want to I want to grow you in this come on and so I think that prayer does that it, God will use it of course to edify his body mm-hmm. but he don't want to edit he don't want to use you to edify people if he ain't getting closer to you he don't want to use you to go out there and, and, and do all this stuff with people. If you ain't seeking him, yeah, yeah. if you ain't growing closer to him, uh-huh. if you ain't if you ain't calling on his name, yeah. all that's cool. But it's like, no, nah, like, what about me and you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, God has just been teaching me that, man. You just preached to yourself, didn't you? Yeah. I feel like you did. Yeah. That, was, was like that a, wasn't for that nobody. Was, that was a boomerang. That word. wasn't for nobody else. That yeah. was for me. Well, I, man. Me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I, and all I got in the end. That's, that's a what really, I found out. That's a really terrible song to end yeah. this conversation with. Uh-huh. And so, bye. Peace. Peace.